What's up indie game fans, today we're going to be taking a look at Golf vs Zombies, a cool little indie game that I found and luckily got a code for. Now before we get started you guys should know that I'm not a professional reviewer, I'm just a guy who likes awesome indie games and these are my honest opinions on these games, so I'll just give you my thoughts and you can choose whether or not the games are for you. So Golf vs Zombies is a game that I came across and I like the idea of. For those of you that know me, you know I love how indie games do things that AAA games just will not do. Sometimes that's mixed genres like this game does. Zombies and Golf doesn't seem like it's something that should work and I'm a huge fan of zombie games though I really haven't played one in a while. And I have this really odd fascination with golf games, you have no idea how many indie golf games I have that I've not finished, but I have this odd fascination with golf games, particularly indie golf games that don't play like regular golf. So I reached out to the dev and I asked for a code and they gave me one. I'm super grateful for it. Thank you so much. So here are my honest opinions on the game. Now I originally thought that I'd make a guide for this game for its achievements as I do with most of the indie games that I pick up. But as you guys can see here, all of the achievements are just for completing holes finding chests and earning money, so that was immediately out of the question. So instead, I'm here telling you about what I think about the game. Now the game does have local multiplayer, and if anyone in my gaming family played on PC, I would have checked this out. However, we are mainly a console family, so I was the only one to be able to play this. The option is there though, and you can play up to 4 players in local co-op, so keep that in mind if you have other gamers in your household. Now of course you can play the game with keyboard and mouse or with the controller, and of course me being a, in a console family, I chose to go with the controller. Really quick tip, if you are playing with a controller, turn down the controller sensitivity to have a better control of your aim. Now if you want, you can take a few practice swings at the training course, and this will help you get your aim just right. You can also try out each special ball before taking it onto the course, and you'll have to buy these in the main game, but on the practice range, they're absolutely free, so go ahead and try them out. Now there are sniper balls and these will allow you to slow down time to get that perfect headshot. There are exploding balls that can be used to take out clusters of zombies and these are really good in the bind. There are freezing balls that will slow down enemies so that you have a little bit more time to make your headshots count. And there's even a nuke ball which you don't have access to so I couldn't try it and I suspect this might be how you end the game. Now the first course is free and where the game officially starts. There are small pop-ups that will let you know how the game plays. Your goal is, of course, to beat the course par score, but along the way you need to collect money in the form of bottle caps hidden in chests in every course, and these caps will allow you to buy new courses, balls, and unique upgrades that will help you overcome the zombie apocalypse, and you also get some caps for killing zombies and completing the course. Now, after every swing you take, given that it's a decent swing and it lands in a decent area, you will be attacked by zombies. In order to take them out, Obviously aim for the head and hope you beat them in time. If not, you will be mauled to death and you'll have to restart the course. Now whenever a course is completed, you'll head back to Billy and you'll have to buy another course in order to progress the game and the story. Now whenever you do head back to Billy, you can customize your character as well and there really isn't much here, uh, it's just some dude with a few customization options. I think personally it would have been really nice to have more than one character model. But hey, it's a small team of game devs, so I'm not going to give them too much crap over that. Now you should definitely keep an eye out for Billy's upgrades and items, as these will definitely help you out along your quest for the tree. Now I highly suggest getting the zombie radar ASAP, as this will give you a mini map and show you where zombies are coming from whenever they start to attack. I cannot tell you guys how many times I got attacked from behind and had to restart a course, so make sure that you pick up the radar, it really, really helps. After that, I really suggest getting the safes upgrade. Safes allow you to bank caps and letters, which will have to be collected on each course in order to progress the story and to find out what really happened in the end of times. And there's also an overview drone that can be helpful and will come in handy if you're trying to unlock 100% of the achievements. Uh, they allow you to fly over the course and spot any cap caches and mailboxes so that you can more easily collect your cash and the letters on every single course. There are also launch platforms which say that they are meant to help you find secret areas but I haven't really used these that much. Now after each course is completed you have the option to drive yourself to a new course or have Billy drive you. But you do have to pay for him to drive you and you can even pay to play a course without zombies on it. But that would totally defeat the purpose of the game so I never took that option. 
Now, if you choose to drive yourself, this will load up a little mini game where you have to run over zombies. This is again important if you're trying to unlock 100% of the achievements, and it also allows you to bank a little bit more money along the way. Though the driving does get pretty repetitive, but hey, I'm here to 100% of the game, so I drove off and I ran over zombies. I should also mention that once you make it to the green of each course, putting the ball is actually pretty simple. It doesn't really have any physics to it, so you can usually just make the putt simply by shooting the ball in a straight line. Now, I think that's everything that you guys need to know about the how the game works, and the following things here are going to be my own opinions on the game. As I mentioned before, I love zombie games, and I have this weird fascination with golf games. I have so many indie golf games. So I thought that I'd really love this game, and don't get me wrong, I like it for what it is, but I do feel like the idea might have stopped at, like, let's mix golf with zombies. Now, of course, I 100% know that I could not have done any better than this, but after a few courses, you kind of just feel like you're playing the game to get to the end and find out what happened to cause a zombie apocalypse. And to be fair, I haven't gotten to the end of the game yet, so maybe there's something extraordinary out there. But again, I haven't finished the game, so take everything that I'm saying with a grain of salt. I think the issue is that there were just so many times when I had to restart each course because a zombie managed to sneak up on me before I could either bank all my money or letters, or sometimes there were just too many zombies that even if I had perfect headshots on each and every one, I wouldn't have enough time to take them all out, so I would have to restart the course again. On top of that, you will have to replay courses in order to earn enough money to buy the new courses that you need to get further into the game, as well as buy the extra gear like your extra balls or other items that you need in order to make the game a little bit easier. And still, if too many zombies spawn, there's a good chance that you'll have to restart the course as well. Now overall, I really do like the game, I enjoy the challenge I enjoy the challenge that each course provides, even though I may have to step away from the game if I have to restart one too many times. I do feel like the story of the game could have been a little bit more involved, but hey, I'm not at the end yet, like I said, maybe there's something absolutely huge hidden for the finale. Overall, I really do enjoy the game and I would recommend it if you're looking for a challenge or just want to chill and unlock more achievements while playing a golf game. However, if you're easily frustrated and you don't really want to work to enjoy the time you have while you're gaming, this might not be the game for you. Now these are my honest opinions on Golf vs Zombies, now it's up to you. Is this a game that you would pick up? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments. And I want to thank the dev team again for the review code. I still plan on working towards 100% of the achievements. It just might take me a little bit longer than I thought it would have. Now, if you guys like this honest review, please be sure to drop a sub for more coming in the near future. And I will see you on the next video.